What's up YouTube, Daryl here from Zephyr War Games, and today, thanks to the help of Joe, I am bringing you an update with a spicy touch to Sacred Beasts. Now, of course, all of these, or most of them, got a nice rarity bump reprint in the Megatins, so I thought now would be a very good time to profile them for you and show you some upgrades. Now, I've kept this relatively budget, revolving around the reprints of the Megatins, and there are a couple of cards in here that you may need to go out and try and find. Uh, but if anything is too expensive, I'll also tell you some alternative options that you can very easily put in here and so on. With all of that out of the way, if you do want to see either a test hand, a duel, or a combo video using this particular deck, then smash that like button, get to at least 50 likes, and I will bring that for you. With all of that out of the way, let's dive head first into this updated, spicy, sacred beast profile with an additional engine. So, zoom in straight in and cracking on with the Sacred Beasts themselves. We are running double Hamon, single Raviel, single Uriah, and single Raviel, Lord of Phantasm, Skimmering Shaper. Now, obviously, this is one of the boss monsters in the sense that you're very rarely ever going to summon into the board, but he can make Raviel an absolute beast. The first Sacred Beast that you want to be going to is Hamon. It does give you additional protection, plus if you get two of them on the board, you do cause your opponent a few issues when they're trying to attack you or if they want to try and attack you. Other than that, of course, Uriah, you're very rarely going to summon it, if any, it's just in here in order to make your fusion monsters because you do require him as a material. Um, other than that, you're not playing enough to kind of make him a beat stick on his own, uh, and that is pretty much his main and best usage for it, is just to be able to go, right, cool, let's rock and roll, um, and, and kind of go from there. Moving on, we then go into the Dark Summoning, Beckoning, and of course Chaos Beasts. So we are going to be playing Triple Dark Beckoning Beast. These are your starters. These are part of your combos. This is everything you need in order to get you across the line. Um, now, keep in mind, these all got nice rarity bumps in the Megatins, uh, especially Chaos Summoning Beast two, uh, got a bump to Super, and then of course Beckoning got a bump to Ultra. And then of course you've got your Triple Chaos Summoning Beast, and your double Dark Summoning Beast. Keep in mind that when you use the Dark Summoning Beast to give you that second Sacred Beast, it cannot attack that turn, or I don't believe you get to conduct your battle phase. Um, yes, as good as these cards are, they are your Achilles heel as well. They are the best target to be Ashed, Imperm, Valid, you name it. Um, but the additional engine that we are playing with in this deck is what gives it that added spice, gives it its added power so that it can play through this. Now, obviously, the two-card combo does consist of a mixture of these two or, of course, the Spirit Gates, but that's kind of where you need to go. Then the additional engine, which did get reprinted in the tins as well, so it's very easy to pick up, is the Dogmatica package. So we've gone with the one Philidius, the one Maximus, and the one Ecclesia. Now, you don't have to play Maximus. It is purely in here to help not turbo out the Shadol package, but just give you that additional edge with the Shadol package, because at the end of the day, if you're got, or if you, you're got, if you've got two Sacred Beasts on board, or even one Sacred Beast on board, the second you then go and window your opponent, you really put them in a bad situation. On top of that, you do play a couple of cards that you can link the window off into in order to allow you to special summon down your Sacred Beast and then move from there. The last monster that we play is Triple Ash Blossom, just the most generic hand trap. If you're fearful that your locals is going to be cross out run, then you can swap these out for Imperms, you can spice it up with Ghost Ogres, you could even put in Droplets in here if you own them, or Dark Ruler No More's, for the pure ability to go, right, okay, you know what, uh, even though I'm not going to do damage, I'm going to clear, turn your board off, clear it, and then go from there. So it really comes down to what your local preference is playing, and these are just free flex spots for any particular hand trap or interruption, because if you don't play this particular like space, then your deck is literally, I hope my opponent doesn't have hand traps, or hope my opponent's board isn't strong enough that I can continue to play through. And that's kind of where you need to be with a deck like this. So, after the monsters, of course, comes the spells. So, for the spells, we are playing Triple Opening of the Spirit Gate. This card is nuts! Absolutely love this card. This is obviously deservedly so got a nice ultra rare bump um, And then of course it does give you the ability to add Uriah, Raviel or of course Hamon or one monster that specifically lists its name So that's where you get the Dark Beckoning, Dark Summoning and Chaos Summoning Beast from Then we've got two Cerulean Skyfire. So this is um, to special summon Hamon You can use face down spells if you want to but once per turn, while you control an attack position Hamon, you can negate any spell or trap activated by your opponent and change Hamon to defense. Now, when Hamon is in defense, you can only attack it. So then you can imagine that if you get two Hamons, that's how you get a nice little uh, attack lock, in a sense. 
um, and that's kind of what makes it even better because then on top of that you also get to lock them in with the field spell. Speaking of which, we are playing two Fallen Paradise. So this one is a Pot of Greed, which is nice. And then the fact that your opponent cannot target Uriah, Homon, or Raviel, or even Armitar the Chaos Phantasm in your monster zones with card effects. So straight away, Veilers, Imperms, that goes out of the board. And then if they try and like Cerberus or anything like that, it cannot happen. And then if you control either of the Sacred Beasts, you get to draw two cards. Now, obviously, that's during your main phase, but it's just a free Pot of Greed. It's like, bro, why would you not? Uh, we're going to be running two Allure of Darknesses. Now, this could be desired if you want to. It really does come down to personal preference. There's no point in playing any of the pots that lock you out, purely for the fact that, you know, you've got one of the best draw cards in the entire game. Um, like, just imagine if this was for, like, a meta-based deck or any kind of deck had a field spell like this. It would just be absolutely bonkers. But for your Darks, of course, you do have additional Dark Summoning Beast, Dark Beckoning Beast, Chaos Summoning Beast, and of course, Raviel and Shimmer and Escaper. Now, you obviously, you don't want any of those to be banished, but if you went a lore, get into a Dark Beckoning Beast, then you can freely banish a Chaos or a Dark Beckoning and go from there. Uh, and then for the last Sacred Beast kind of orientated card, we are playing the Dimension Fusion Destruction. Purely because it's a card you can send off a Verte, you banish the materials from the graveyard, and it gives you one heck of a boss monster, or one heck of a board wiper, whichever you prefer. Then of course, the Matt Daddy, the reason that we are playing the Dogmatica package is Triple Nadir. Now, obviously the deck doesn't rely heavily on the extra deck, there's very few cards you actually desperately need in there. So being able to special summon out, as long as you've got to your... Um, Dark Beckoning off the board, so going to something like Almirage, from that point on you don't care. So you can just go into Deer Servant and off you go. Um, obviously, you have the ability to make something like a Verte before any of that happens, and then start doing everything else you need to. But ideally, you just want to get your Almirage on the board, that gives you the ability of bringing down Ecclesia, and then you're free to go from there. And everything you send off in the Deer is going to help get you into the Shadow Engine, um, and then the Shadow Engine is pretty much going to go, here's my gods you now cannot attack, or here's my Hamon, which means you can't attack anything else, and I'm going to give you a window as well that your opponent just can't deal with. One, one for one, one called by. Obviously, called by is Mac Daddy. Uh, and then one for one just to give you your Chaos Summoning Beast. Then on to the trap cards. Again, we've got going minimal trap cards, but we are going with pure control trap cards. And what we mean by that is we are rocking triple Dolmatica Punishment. Uh, again, you don't care about the extra deck. Chances are your secondary turn as well, you don't care about the extra deck because you're ideally building up to get into your Sacred Beast if you don't already have them. So punishment becoming a free pop two is just, you know, it's everything you need. It's two pops and then you're going to bring down a, a, a like a Sacred Beast. So you're going to be able to deal with anything that you can need to attack over. To awaken into Sacred Beast, I would have loved to have seen this as a Prismatic Seeker because I think it would have popped like no tomorrow. Um, but this one gives you, if you have... A one Sacred Beast on the board, each time your opponent normals or specials, you gain life point equal to the attack that monster. Time is going to be a arch with this card. Two, negate the activated effects of monsters your opponent controls. Wow, so we have a one-sided skill drain. Broken. And then three, any monster sent to your opponent's graveyard is banished instead. Now, obviously, by having all three Sacred Beasts on board, you're going to get all three effects. Um, but ideally, you're just pushing for the second one. And like the best play is Hamon with Raviel. Activate, awake, uh, activate the Fallen Paradise, draw two, get into one of this, and you're just like, yep, yeah, cool. My opponent is not going to have a very nice day. And then, of course, if you're going to add stuff like Windows and Dogmaticas off the back of that. Whoa. Uh, and then finally, the one Schism, because Schism is an insane trap card. Uh, and the fact that it's searchable when you play a Dogmatica package, in my opinion, it's one of the first cards that gets added to the Dogmatica list when I put those decks together. Moving on to the extra deck, of course we are rocking the one Armitar, the Chaos Phantasm, alongside the alternative boss monster of Armitar, the Chaos Phantasm, Phantasm of Fury. So obviously the Armitar becomes a 10k beater during your turn, but then alternatively the Chaos Phantasm can be shifted control to your opponent, banish all cards they control, and then you get a free Armitar as well off the back of it. Uh, for the other fusion, big boss guy, we've got five-headed dragon, just to make sure that off of punishment, you're always going to have a target. But if you're not a fan of this, you can always put Gustav Max in here. There are times when this comes up to just burn for that additional 2k, and that's where two Hamons come into kind of effectiveness, but you don't need to rely on it. Then for the rest of the fusion monsters, they are pretty much targets to come off of your Nadir or your Shadol fusion, or Schism technically. So we've got two window, so if they out the first window, you just use the window in the graveyard and then your Dark Beckoning or Chaos Summoning or anything like that to make the second one, and then they're in big trouble. 
app cologne. So obviously send this off in the dear servant, gives you the schism, ditch a card off a schism, and off you rock and you roll. Double Natis, the best card to be sending off of your punishment for a double pop. And then the one Titanic Lad to give you easier access to an Ecclesia, to a Felidius, whatever you may need. Then we move on to the links. Now the links we've got your Link Karibo, which is your Chaos Summoning Beast. You've got your Almirage, which is your Dark Beckoning Beast. And then straight away they unlock your Ecclesia. Uh, and then we've got the Verte Anaconda. This is, if you don't have Verte Anaconda, you can take it out. You can go for IP Mascarina. If you were to do something like that, then I wouldn't worry too much about the Chaos Phantasm Fusion. Unless you wanted to max out on it, because this is just the most direct way of getting to it. One card that I don't have at current, or I couldn't find, is Pentastag. And this is purely because Raviel can become an 8k boss with uh, the Shimmer and Scaper. And then Hamon's going to be 4k on each. So if your opponent just walls up and goes defensive, you need a way to beat through that and go through that. And that's where Pentastag comes into play. And then the last two Link Monsters is your Unicorn, and then of course your Boral Sword. Now, if you have an upgrade in power and you have access to access code, then I'd highly advise making that the Boral Sword. But there are times where Boral Sword can be better just for the pure fact that it goes, right, okay, cool. I've got Felidius, I've got Ecclesia, I've got Maximus on the board. They've done their jobs back to my second turn after summoning them. I've got three additional monsters. I've also got Sacred Beast on the board. I'm going to normal summon a monster. I'm going to go straight into Boral Sword Dragon. I'm then going to be able to attack with my Sacred Beast, shift it to defense, attack again um, with Boral Sword twice ultimately leading you to OTK. Uh, you do obviously have access to Unicorns, Cerberuses, uh, and on top of that, IP Mascarinas. Depending on your personal playstyle, you could also go with a Gustav Max into Labelle, and Labelle can give you a match-winning power punch as well. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. So again, massive shout out to Joe who helped put this list together. Um, I made a couple of little tweaks and by that I just mean I added in Maximus and took out the Uriah Trap card because I'm not a massive fan of it. But it still puts in a heck of a lot of work and you've got to love it because I have huge amounts of fun with this particular deck uh, when it first came out. And I just feel now that the reprints have come for the Dogmaticas and they're easier to get and the deck looks very nice as foil, it would be very silly not to give them a nice run out and an update. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share. Like I said at the start, you get this video up to at least 50 likes. I will bring you either a dual combo video or test hand showing you what this deck can do. And trust me, it can pack a very powerful punch. As absolutely always, guys, stay safe. And of course, happy dueling.